Do you want to make your Warhammer minis look like you put in max effort without actually putting in max effort? Yeah, me too. In this video, we'll explore how I do that. Hey there, hobby friends. I'm Jared, and this is Caffeinated Miniatures. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Recently, as I've been doing more army painting, I've been searching for that happy medium between painting for outright speed and volume and painting to a relatively high standard. And through this, I've kind of fallen into a painting process that's high impact, but fairly low effort. And most importantly, no time consuming blends. Now to demonstrate it, let's paint up the strongest character in Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Yeah, that's right. Scragrot the Loon King. Don't at me, bro. You know I'm right. Before we start slopping on some paint, shout out to Proacryl from Monument Hobbies for making my favorite paint. And speaking of Proacryl, let's slap some camel green on the skin. Then mixing in some deep yellow, I'll build up some volumes and highlights. With small areas like this, we really don't need to do any blending. Simply keeping the layers thin on these small surfaces builds a very smooth gradient. Each step up is so small that our eyes do all of the blending for us. The majority of scrag rot is his cloak, which is a perfect place to showcase this technique. Essentially building up several thin lines of paint. And this idea is certainly not new. Comics have used cross-hatching for as long as they've existed. The concept is relatively simple. As you place more overlapping lines together, it increases the visual opacity. When there are fewer lines further apart, you'll see more of the underlying layer and the actual color you're painting becomes less opaque. We can use this concept to quickly build sketchy layers that read as much more smooth and blended than they actually are. On Scraggy's cloak, I started with a solid coat of black green, covering all of the cloak. Mixing in pale yellow, I started building some volumes with the previously mentioned thin lines. Now, part of the beauty of this is that we don't need to use several mixes or highlight colors. By increasing the density, or how many lines are in any area, you increase the opacity. So if we thin the paint enough, we can use a fairly bright mix and increase the number of brush strokes we use towards the brightest points. Ultimately, using fewer paints is gonna save us precious time. The staff has some very pronounced sculpted grain. However, you can still add some additional interest and texture with the same technique. After slapping dark golden brown over all of the wood, I mixed in a little pale yellow and began building up the wood grain. To make avoiding the recesses easier, I mostly used the side of the brush, moving it along the pronounced grain. At this stage, I covered most of the wood, just leaving the deepest recesses. As I mixed in more pale yellow, I began using the same thin lines, adding smaller grain to the large sculpted grain, creating slightly more visual interest with very little effort. I felt like the crown should be a nice blue steel kind of metal, as though it was reflecting moonlight. So I started with dark blue, then built highlights and reflections by mixing in bold titanium white. To contrast this cool metal, I made the moon on the crown and most of the other metal accessories a yellow gold kind of color using dark golden brown, golden brown, and pale yellow. And it was right around this point that I realized just how many little bits there are on this fella. Just so many mushrooms. but after powering through the remaining details, we had a finished model. But before the reveal, a couple more notes about the hash marquee painting method. 
the sky really is the limit for the number of textures and materials you could use it for. I painted this giant cave squig tongue using the technique. All the metal on this loon boss, and all the mushrooms. Changing the size, direction, and density can impact how it reads. So get painting those thin lines. And in the meantime, here's Scragrot. And there you go, my take on the Loon King, and my take on a faster method of getting color on minis. What do you think? Do you have a go-to method for quickly painting minis that isn't necessarily speed painting? Let me know in the comments below. I think it's important to remember that no concept or technique exists in a vacuum. You can combine them and mix them up, slap contrast paint on that goblin's face, but then some quick sketchy lines on the cloak. Don't get bogged down thinking about what technique to use. Just enjoy slapping paint on plastic or resin or metal. You, you get the point. Just enjoy slapping paint on minis. As always, if you made it this far, you are an absolute legend. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more mediocre hobby content. If you want to be an outright champion, share the video with your hobby friends. And thanks for watching. You are awesome. And I'll see you in the next one. Between painting for outrights, I just spit.